Greetings and welcome, members and friends of the Fries Valley, Janaton Hutton, and Uricksville Moravian congregations as we gather on this Wednesday of Holy Week 2021. We share together in our Holy Week reading service. Holy Week reading services are a beloved custom within the Moravian Church, and they're intended to provide us with an opportunity to journey with Jesus through the events of the first Holy Week. Our readings are composed of a harmonization of the four gospel witnesses of the events of the first Holy Week. And as the story unfolds, we're encouraged to actually place ourselves in the story at Jesus' side, to walk with him through this challenging time. Now, our service will also include hymn verses, which due to pandemic conditions will be spoken rather than sung. Highlights of today's readings, the Wednesday readings, will include Jesus offering a great wake-up call, haunting images of a coming great judgment, and a shocking redefinition of true greatness offered by Jesus at the Last Supper. Now, you might find it most helpful simply to sit back and and listen as the readings unfold. But for those who would like to follow along, we have sent those on our email list links to a digital copy of the readings. And many folks have access to either the brown or the purple Holy Week reading manuals. And so if you would like to follow along, you will find page numbers corresponding to those readings in the comments below. Now, let's pray. Lord, as we gather now in prayer, we invite you to be among us. Perhaps we have heard these words many times before, but at this time we pray that we might hear these words afresh, that the events might be painted across the landscape of our minds and imaginations, that we might truly be present with you and experience this story afresh. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. The readings for Tuesday continue. The need for watchfulness. But about that day and hour, no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together, one will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. Lord, for your coming us prepare. May we, to meet you without fear, at all times ready be. In faith and love preserve us sound. O oh, let us day and night be found waiting with joy your face to see. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. You servants of the Lord, each in your office wait, observant of his heavenly word and watchful at his gate. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Faithful, Unfaithful Slave Who then is faithful? and the wise slave, whom his master has put in charge of his household, 
to give the other slaves their allowances of food at the proper time. Blessed is that slave whom his master will find at work when he arrives. Truly I tell you, he will put that one in charge of all of his possessions. But if that wicked slave says to himself, my master is delayed, and he begins to beat his fellow slaves, and eats and drinks with drunkards, the master of the slave will come on a day when he does not expect him, and at an hour he does not know, and he will cut him to pieces and put him with the hypocrites, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Oh, blessed hope, in faith we wait hearing footsteps at the gate while we his triumph celebrate until he comes. Parable of the wise and foolish bridesmaids. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Rejoice, rejoice, believers, and let your lights appear. The evening is advancing and darker night is near. The bridegroom is arising and soon is drawing nigh. Up, pray and watch and wrestle. At midnight comes the cry. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly, I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The watchers on the mountain proclaim the bridegroom near. Go forth as he approaches with alleluias clear. The marriage feast is waiting, the gates wide open stand. Arise, O heirs of glory, the bridegroom is at hand. Parable of the Talents For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, each according to to his ability, and then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them, and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been more trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. 
enter into the joy of your master. And then the one who received the one talent came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and I hid your talent in the ground. Here, have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take that talent from him and give it to the one who has ten talents. For to all who of those who have, more will be given, and they will have abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Help us, O oh God, to use our gifts in service day by day, that what you give us we may share and work as well as pray. The Great Judgment. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he, then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison? And did not take care of you. Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Where cross the crowded ways of life, where sound the cries of race and clan, above the noise of selfish strife, we hear your voice, O Son of Man. The cup of water given for you still holds the freshness of your grace. Yet long these multitudes to view the strong compassion in your face. The plot to kill Jesus. When Jesus had finished saying all these things, he said to his disciples, You know that after two days the Passover is coming and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him, for they said, Not during the festival, for there may be a riot among the people. Then Satan entered Judas, called Iscariot, who was one of the twelve. He went away and conferred with the chief priests and officers of the temple police about how he might betray him to them. They were greatly pleased and agreed to give him money. So he consented and began to look for an opportunity to betray him to them. 
when no crowd was present. O Lamb of God, still keep me near to your wounded side. Tis only there in safety and peace I can abide. What foes and snares surround me, what doubts and fears within, the grace that sought and found me alone can keep me clean. Thursday evening, preparation for the Passover. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover meal for us, that we may eat it. They asked him, Where do you want us to make preparations for it? Listen, he said to them, When you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters, and say to the owner of the house, the teacher asked you, where is the great guest room where I may eat Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs already furnished. Make pe preparations for us there. So they went and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Mine is an unchanging love, higher than the heights above, deeper than the depths beneath, Free and faithful, strong as death. The Last Supper. When the hour came, he took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. A dispute also arose among them as to which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But he said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? It is not the one at the table, but I am among you as one who serves. Jesus washes the disciples' feet. During supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you, for he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. Then take the towel and break the bread and humble us and call us friends. Suffer and serve till all are fed and show how grandly love intends to work till all creation sings, to fill all worlds, to crown all things.
after he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You called me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. I am not speaking of all of you. I know whom I have chosen. But it is to fulfill the scripture. The one who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. I tell you this now, before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe that I am he. Very truly I tell you, Whoever receives one whom I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. Blessed Jesus, at your word we are gathered all to hear you. Let our hearts and souls be stirred now to seek and love and fear you. By your teachings, true and holy, drawn from earth to love you solely. Jesus foretells his betrayer. As they were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him, one after another, Surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter therefore motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So while reclining next to Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. So when he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, and he received the piece of bread. Satan entered him. Jesus said to him, Do quickly what you are going to do. Now no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought, some thought that because Judas had the common purse, Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the festival, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the piece of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. Jesus, priceless treasure, source of purest pleasure, friend to me so true, how my heart has panted and my soul has fainted, thirsting after you. Yours I am, O spotless lamb, I will suffer not to hide you, not I ask beside you. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. This concludes our readings for Wednesday. We offer our thanks to Connie Kinsey, Linda Spring, and Jeff Stearns, who were recorded as part of our 2020 Holy Week reading services. We also offer our thanks to our technician, Jaden Stearns. Tomorrow, on Thursday evening, you're invited to join us as we gather in person at 7 o'clock at First Moravian Church in Yerkesville for our Maundy Thursday service, and we will also offer an online Maundy Thursday service as well. And then on Good Friday, we gather at 7.30 p.m. at Fry's Valley Moravian Church for a joint Good Friday Tenebrae service. And again, an online service will be offered as well. 
And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of Jesus, amen.